Sorry, I'm speaking in English. Um, but I also want to thank the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation and everyone who's here early in the morning. Um, so Dario, you took that same part I was going to say since it's Saturday. Um, so I'm going to talk about Argentina. And I lived in Argentina after the economic crisis in 2001 and put together an oral history and continue to go back and spend a lot of time there. Um, but the context in, in talking about recuperated workplaces is very specific. It was a break. It was a kind of moment in history um, in 2001 where there's a long history of privatization that leads to a massive economic crisis, actually a collapse of the economy, really. Um, and the government in this, it's a particular moment, the government froze everyone's bank accounts because there was a fear that people would take all of their money out of the banks. And what that caused in response was people going out into the street, banging on pots and pans. It's called the casserola. Um, and kind of just coming in the hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands. Um, and actually they forced out four governments with this kind of popular power in the street. Um, the way people describe this process, the banging of pots and pans, and then the song and slogan that came out of that was que se vayan todos, which is, they all must go. And that meant the government, that meant pretty much everyone. The Ministry of the Economy was actually the first to resign. Um, and people describe it as a breaking with this idea of no te metas, which is don't involve yourself with the other. Um, and then coming together, and as people are now hundreds of thousands in the street, they begin looking to each other. So, you know, kind of, now what? What do we do next? Um, and began these horizontal assemblies in neighborhoods, also simultaneously, and this is what I'm gonna talk about, in workplaces and in unemployed neighborhoods. But this process is incredibly important because it's a break with former ways of relating that was happening throughout society. And what came out of this was the idea of horizontalidad, which is when I would ask people what does horizontalidad mean? And I'm doing an oral history, so you can imagine I'm recording, and people would say, well, it's this. So you say, well, okay, what's that? Well, it's not this. So that we're gonna do this together. We're gonna look to each other. And coming from having participated in Occupy Wall Street in New York and all of the movements that are emerging with this Democracia Real in Spain, people forming these horizontal assemblies, deciding to do it together, is an integral part of what's happening in the new movements, including in the recuperated workplaces in Argentina. So there were a few workplaces before 2001, before the crisis, that were in the process of being taken over by workers. Um, but after the crisis, this increased exponentially and became dozens, and now what is almost 300 recuperated workplaces. And, and I'm using the word workplace and not factory, and that's important because they're not just, there are metal factories and all kinds of parts, you know, traditional factories, but there are also schools and medical clinics. There's a four-star hotel, um, so it's all kinds of, relationships in society, not just the, the typical factory. The other word that's really important in this is recuperated, which yesterday also the workers who are here from, from Serbia, from Jugoromedia, use the same word, recuperated, which is not the same as occupying. Recuperating implies it, it's yours and you're taking it back, which is different than occupying and placing a demand. So again, it's a different process and a different process in the conversation on cooperatives. It goes in the same broader conversation, but it's a different relationship. The slogan that the workers use in the process of recuperating, they borrowed from the landless movement of Brazil, which is occupy, resist, produce. And as much as yes, it's very complicated, people in the workplaces also describe it as incredibly simple, kind of a household economics. You just want to balance the budget at the end. And there are a lot of challenges and we should talk about it, but using this simple formula, first you take back what's yours, and then you resist the police and the state, which almost always has to happen, and sometimes quite brutally, and then begin production. In the workplaces that exist now, um, 60 to 70% of them use what they would refer to either as horizontalidad or some form of horizontal social relationships and assemblies. So distribution, equal power, breaking with hierarchy, not having managers within the workplace. Uh, a large percentage of them even rotate jobs, so doing new training continuously throughout the different workplaces, and have assemblies anywhere from twice a week. Um, one workplace that's really small, Grisionopolis in Buenos Aires, they actually moved their machines in a circle 
so they could, almost, they could be in kind of constant assembly, deciding all the time what they're producing, how are they producing it, what are they doing with it. Um, and the heart of how they exist and continue to exist, the way workers would describe it, also similar to the way workers from uh, Yugoramalia were speaking yesterday, is solidarity. So solidarity meaning the community support solidarity, solidarity with one another in the workplaces, um, and solidarity actually outside of Argentina. And that brings the question of challenges as well and how the workplaces are organized. Um, because, well, just actually another important fact. So all of this, as we continue, and then recently there have been more recuperations of workplaces as the crisis Argentina stabilized to varying extents after 2001, and then as the crisis hit again, a different crisis in around 2008, there's a resurgence of even more recuperations again. 90% uh, of the recuperations that started in 2001 have continued. So the 10% the that don't continue is also not a perfectly accurate number because a number of those have chosen to go under state control rather than maintain the recuperation process, which is something we'll talk about maybe in our discussion on the state. Now, the biggest challenges the workplaces face, and this was um, a point raised yesterday on the panel, when you're looking at the question of success, how do we measure and think about success? And the point raised yesterday, and I would absolutely agree with is we look at it first from the perspective of those people in struggle, those people organizing. So what do they say is their success? What do they say their goals are? And then from that perspective, we can have a conversation and we can engage and disagree. But so, okay, in Argentina, the recuperated workplaces, what is their success? And how would they kind of put out their goals? And the way they describe it is it's about basically just surviving and then helping one another, the solidarity politics. And this is not ideological. This is not coming from a place of workers saying, we need to take over our factory because we want socialism or capitalism is bad. It's just that capitalism failed them. And so they're creating an alternative for, and then out of that comes all of the different ideas and, and the creation. Um, so, okay. Um, so then, in looking at how do they decide what they're producing, how are they producing, how long do they work, a lot of these decisions are made based on the idea of solidarity as well. So this raises the question of, yes, it's under capitalism, there's market value and exchange, but at the same time, the workers are not saying we want to make the most competitive workplace in capitalist terms. They're saying we want to create something different, and our priority is how we relate to one another, in this horizontal way and how we're relating to people in society. So that choices are made all the time in workplaces. When you get to that resist part, a workplace occupies, then it has to resist the police. Um, people will go from one workplace and release, they'll make a decision in an assembly sometimes to release a, a large percentage of the workforce to go and defend another workplace. So that decision, that might not be the most productive in capitalist terms but it is in solidarity terms. So there's this whole other way of thinking about the value that's being created in the workplaces that is beyond or different than capitalist value exchange. And I think that part is what is so important in this process of recuperation in Argentina, the creation of um, new social relationships. And then also in that, the, the last point that is so central to this in this solidarity is the role of the community. So if you speak to anyone in any workplace, they will say the reason they're successful is not just because of their horizontal forms or their relationship to other workplaces, which it is, but it's also to the community as a whole. So the people who come out and support them from the neighborhoods, their workplaces when the police come to attack them that are defended by, you know, one of my favorites is this print shop in Buenos Aires. Print shops have a wonderful long history of of resistance and there's a whole network of just print shops in Argentina. Um, but it was the retirement home across the street that came and it was the old people who came and were the front line in battling the police and sometimes they're real battles. It's not just kind of a picket line. So that kind of solidarity in that and then the workplaces are now being used, most all of them as community centers. So after it's recuperated, brought under production, it's a part of the community. So sometimes there's education that happens, there's tango classes or salsa, there's computer classes. It's used for many, many different things. So it becomes an integral part of the community, which is also really important in thinking about 
production in society. But I'm going to leave it there because I know we're going to get into debate about the role of the state. So I'm not even going to touch it yet. <laughs> Thank you, Marlena. Thank you.